Well, some time ago, I was driving on the Pilani Highway and um, thinking about something else. Does that ever happen to you? Right? My mind is a million miles away. And I realized that my exit is upon me. Right? It's like right there. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm in this, I'm in the lane furthest to the center of the road, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, how, how, how am I going to get there, right? So I looked over, and there's a car right here, right? And so I'm trying to judge, okay, can I get in front of that guy and off the exit? Well, sure I can. So I speed up and pull in front of this guy, and he honks his horn at me, and then I, whew, I pull off, just barely make the exit, and I come down, and I'm stopped at a light, and I'm kind of going, whew, right? And I look over, and who is next to me? The, car, the guy that I had cut off, and he is giving me the one-finger salute, so I got this rush of adrenaline, and I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? So <laughs> this is the second talk uh, in a row in a series titled uh, Rewire Your Brain. Don't take it personally. And we're looking at what can we do to, in, in the way that we are, in the way that we think, in the way that we speak, in the way that we judge things, to rewire our brain so that we can live the most happy, peaceful, and loving life. Isn't that what we all want, to be that way? So we can do that by consciously choosing what we think and what we do. And so today we're going to talk about the things that we can do around not taking it personally to be able to have more peace and more love and more joy in our lives. Dr. Joy Brothers, uh, who was an American psychologist and TV personality, was giving a, uh, a lecture at a woman's conference. And she said, you know, women tend to take things personally more than men do. And she knows, no, long, no sooner did she get those words out of her mouth than some woman stood up and said, well, I certainly don't. Kind of, <laughs> kind of proved her point. <laughs> Often, we need to hear what others are saying, right? And, and sometimes we can take things personally, and they, they're, it's difficult for us to hear that. But sometimes we need to listen, even beyond the, the feelings that we have to what's being said, because often there is a message for us in the things that people are saying, in the feedback that they give us. Um, not taking things personally, to me, means that we don't get offended by something that someone says or that they do. Now, any of you ever have that happen? You ever get offended by something that somebody says? Uh, probably not. <laughs> I'm probably just giving this talk for me and not for you. So what it really means is... is not seeing the actions of others as an attack. If we could do that and just be in the moment and not take it personally, then we can, we're able to respond with more love, with more peace, with more joy. Isn't that true? Yes. You know, and what I find, when, how I can tell if I'm taking something personally is that I have a emotional reaction to something that somebody says, right? It's like, I don't, I don't have to think about, you know, is, am I taking it personally? Because it's in my being, right? It comes up as anger. It comes up as fear. It comes up as defensiveness. True for you? So a few weeks ago, um, there's a woman sitting back here. She didn't, she didn't look like this. We're keeping her identity uh, a secret. But she's sitting back here, and I'm giving my talk, and she's looking at me like this. 
right? And I, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, she's shaking her head and she's giving me this, what I interpreted as kind of a disgusting look or that look of, that's a bunch of bullshit, you know? And, and I'm thinking, I, I can say bullshit, can I? I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Go on, move on. So, and, and so I find myself in this loop of judging what this woman is appearing like in my imagination. And I'm like, oh man, I, uh, she's just not digging it. You know, what am I saying? I'm looking at my notes going, you know, how can I make this ring true for her? And, and I'm, I'm getting defensive in my mind. And fortunately... I was able to take a breath and just realize that there were a few other people in the room who looked like they were interested. And I was able to go with that instead of what I assumed that this woman, uh, I'm, I'm calling her the disagreeing person, is thinking. <laughs> and interestingly enough, she called me, or she, um, I'm sorry, she emailed me a few days later, and she said, you know, that was one of the greatest talks I ever heard. And she said, that talk changed my mind. I really was able to look at myself in a way that was disturbing initially, but my life is better because of what you talked about on that day. You know, and, and what I realized is when I have successfully not taken things personally, it's because I am clear about who I am. I am clear that I am a spiritual being having a physical experience, and I'm clear that of my intentions. I am clear of that what I'm practicing is self-forgiveness and self-love. And I can forgive that person that I'm assuming <laughs> is having judgments about me. And, and in truth, I can forgive myself. That's really where the love happens. I can forgive myself for judging, for assuming, and for jumping to conclusions. I can forgive myself even for getting defensive and reactive. Because that's where the healing starts when we can really look at ourselves and forgive ourselves knowing that we did the best job we can and we can move forward from here and experience things differently next time. I do not take things personally and I am at peace. Say that with me. I do not take things personally and I am at peace. You know, the disagreeing woman, <laughs> her actions had nothing to do with me. I can only guess that her, the, 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 in, the, the looks and the, what I interpreted as disgust or disagreement were my interpretations of her experience and really had nothing to do with her. So how often do we judge somebody based upon their facial expressions or, or what we assume that they're thinking? And we can let that inhibit our behavior and pull us out of being fully present in the moment. And that's really what we're talking about today is how can, how can I be focused in the midst of life? How can I be the presence of love wherever I am, to be present, to love, and to not make assumptions. And that, that's another talk. So how can we practice, how can we practice not taking things personally? And the first step in any real spiritual understanding and transformation is to notice when you do. You know, when next time you take something personal, just kind of go, oh, isn't that interesting? Look at what I'm doing. I'm taking this personally. And just gonna, ah, forgive yourself. Realize that's what's happening. This is part of our spiritual process. This happens all the time on this spiritual journey. 
and just take a breath and notice. <sighs> okay. And just allow yourself to feel your feelings. We don't want to push them away. You, how might you feel in that moment? Disappointed, angry with yourself, right? That, oh, here I go again, taking things personally. Instead, just kind of relax into it and go, interesting. I'm taking things personally. Ah, and often we can turn it around right in the moment and come from a better place. There's a great story that I like. Um, it's a Taoist parable. And it's, it's about um, this guy who's in um, a canoe on a slow-moving river. And he's having a, a beautiful time. He brought his lunch, and he's paddling, and he's enjoying the amazing day. And he takes out his lunch, and he's getting ready to eat it, and he's having a fantastic time. And all of a sudden, bump, his canoe bumps up against something and turns, capsizes, and dumps him into the river with his lunch, right? And then he comes, he comes out of the water, and he sputters, and he's taking a breath, and he realizes that one of somebody he knew intentionally capsized the canoe. How does he feel? And then another scenario. Same guy, same river, same canoe, same lunch, and he's out there, he's having a good time, and he's paddling along, and it, it's a beautiful day, and he's taking out his lunch, and he's getting ready to enjoy it, and boom, he bumps up to, against something. The canoe capsizes, dumps him out. He's all wet. His lunch is soaked, and he looks up and realizes, oh, he hit a submerged log. Maybe there's a whole different feeling there because he's not taking it personally. It just happened. And so that's really the key for us. How can we go through our lives and uh, uh, recognizing, allowing the things that happen to us and knowing that it's just things that happen? We don't have to get upset about it. We don't have to take it personally. And... We can just breathe, knowing that we weren't target, targeted personally. I do not take things personally, and I am at peace. So how can we not take things personally? How can we practice not taking things personally? And I believe that the way to do that is to respond with compassion and harmony to whatever happens, to, to respond to ourselves with compassion when we get upset and just kind of go, oh, that's interesting again. I'm finding myself triggered. Can I be okay with that? Can I be compassionate? Can I be compassionate to the, the, the person who flipped over my canoe or can I be compassionate to myself when my canoe is tipped, uh, capsized by a rock? So the key is to respond with compassion and harmony. You know, when we, when we take things personally, we have a tendency, I have a tendency to attempt to defend my beliefs. Ever been in that place? And how does that work out? When we defend ourselves, what does it cause the other person, if there's a person involved, what does it cause them to do? Right? Whenever there is resistance, one hand pushing against another hand, what do we do? If we take things defensively, then the other person is going to push back. Right? But if we can just say, ah... Oh. I have compassion for myself. I have no reason to resist. I have no reason to fight. I have no reason to be angry with you. Beyond that instant <laughs> where the ego says, I have to get back at them, right? And just have compassion. To have love. So how can we have, how can we practice not taking things personally? And I think it it is to realize that nothing someone says to you can hurt you. 
That's the truth. The only way that someone can hurt us is if we interpret their words in a way that we think hurts us. It's our interpretation, not what the person does, not what the person says. You know, other people can't hurt us unless we give them our permission. And when we take it personally, we're giving that person permission, in fact, to hurt us, when that may not even be their intent. They may just be doing what they're doing. I love uh, this scripture from Luke. Jesus says in Luke 23, 34, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. I think that's so interesting because whether we recognize it or not, we are often functioning in our world in... um, in, in these little bubbles of not paying attention or bubbles of not being conscious or, you know, we go through a lot of our lives being unconscious, right? Just doing what needs to be done, just, just being present with something else. Like I was driving my car and I was thinking about something else. Uh, in, the, in that moment, I was unconscious. And so we often live our lives in a trance, And what Jesus is saying is, Father, forgive these people who are hurting me because they don't know what they're doing. They're unconscious. They're just doing what they're being told to do, what what the rulers of that time were saying that they needed to do and how they needed to be. The truth of it is, if they really knew what Jesus' message was, they wouldn't be doing what they were doing. In the same way, people sometimes appear to hurt us because they're unconscious. Because they're not acting out of their heart. They're not acting out of their presence. They're not acting out of their highest state of mind from their Christ consciousness. I do not take things personally. And I am at peace. So how can we practice not taking things personally? We can ask ourselves, what did I learn from this situation? <laughs> when, when we have that moment when we, when we become conscious and we can ask ourselves, what did I learn from this? What did I learn from driving down the highway, being unconscious and looking over and realizing that there was somebody there and making that choice to put his life and my life and in danger. And what I, what I learned was that I can drive better. I, I, can, I can be more conscious when I'm driving. I can stop and take a breath. You know, it wouldn't have been a bad thing for me to go on to the next exit. It may not have been a bad thing for me to look at my rearview mirror and see there's nobody behind me and slow down and let that car pass so that I could get over and take the exit. You know, this is what's so fun about this. There's always something that we can learn. What, what could I learn about the woman who was sitting in the back um, looking to me like, she was disgusted or angry or not paying attention, I can learn not to judge people. You know, if, if, um, if when I'm giving a talk, if I looked around and, and, and judged how I'm presenting my talk based on how oh, everybody's looking at me, right, and trying to assume, oh, what you must be thinking, I go crazy, Right? So the lesson is just to really be conscious. You know, so much of what we do is to learn, is, is teaching ourselves, how can we be present in the moment? Isn't that what so many spiritual teachers talk about? How can I be present right now? 
And a lot of times, it's just making that choice and realizing, oh, I'm not present. And I'm going to pull myself back into this moment because this is the moment that matters right now. This is, this is where the presence of God is. This is where spirit is. This is where love is. This is where truth and joy and power is right in this moment. And what's the bigger picture? What can I learn from this experience? I love this. I love um, this idea. When I first came up with this idea, I had to think about it a little bit, and I hope it makes sense to you. It's, it goes, it's not what you say about me that is important. It's what I say about myself, about what you say about me. Right? That woman in the back, I'm, I'm thinking that she's, she's telling me that she's not paying attention. She doesn't care. Right? That, that's not what, but that's how I'm hearing. That's what I'm saying about myself, not what she's saying about me. It's not what you say about me that's important. It's what I say about myself, about what you say about me. So many times we get ourselves into trouble because we take things personally that somebody says or does, and that's not even their intention. Most people, I've realized, are sort of moving in their own orb, you know, in their own experience. And... uh, they don't care diddly squat about me or, or what I'm doing or what I'm thinking, right? They're busy focus on their life. Can you say diddly squat in church? I don't know what it means, but. <laughs> so how can we take things? How can we learn to t- not take things personally? And that is to take responsibility for our choices. To take responsibility for the th- things that we choose to do to take responsibility for how we respond in our lives. I like to, 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 draw, uh, to look at the two words, react and respond. Oftentimes, when we, when somebody, um, we take something, when somebody, when, when, oftentimes, when somebody, we take something personally, we are reacting to what happened, right? Because our ego gets involved, our defensive mechanism gets involved, and when we get defensive, we go unconscious. And, and we react. The lesson is, instead of reacting, how can we respond with love? Someone said there's a, there's a minute second of choice that we have so often in our lives to when, when we, we get that rush of adrenaline, ever had that? Woo, all the blood goes to your head, right? And you're going to just say some beautiful poetry. You're going you're gonna to say the speech you're going to regret the rest of your life, right? <laughs> and if, if we can get in that second and go, nope, I'm not going to react I'm going to take a breath, and I'm going to respond with love. Sometimes the best response is no response at all. Sometimes when we take something personally, and we feel this urge to have to um, be defensive or express our opinion or defend ourselves, the best decision is to do nothing. Lots of times, it doesn't really matter. Um, so we want to take responsibility for our choices. Wayne Dyer uh, told an amazing story. I don't remember if I heard it when he spoke live or read it in one of his books. But he tells a story uh, about being on a plane, and the plane was crowded. Right, and it was full. Every seat was taken, and before the flight got off the ground, uh, they were on the tarmac for a couple hours. And then, when the plane landed at its destination, they were on the tarmac for a couple hours. And the people were absolutely fuming. 
right? The energy was just way over the top. And people were taking the anger out on the flight attendant. And Wayne Dyer saw this and he said, come here. And he said, imagine that all these things that people are saying to you are they're speaking to your uniform and you can let them go into your uniform, right? And don't take it personally yourself. And then no, when you go home, you can take this uniform off and you can wash it and all that stuff is gone. Don't take it personally. Don, uh, oh, oh, good. So here I am. I am uh, pulled off the freeway, and I look over, and this guy is giving me, I don't know if it was a salute or an invitation, but I'm like, <laughs> no, I, I don't, I'm not interested in either one. What can I do? And I thought, you know, my, Part of my reaction was, right? I want to respond with a, a salute in kind, right? Isn't that often what we do? And, and, I, and then I was able to find that moment, take my breath and say, I'm not going to respond that way. So I looked at him and I said, I kind of mouthed, I'm sorry. And I said, I'm cuckoo. And he laughed, gave me a shaka, and drove off. Whew. And I had a great day. Miguel, Don Miguel Ruiz writes in his book, The Four Agreements, the way you see the movie of your life is according to the agreements that you have with your life. If you get mad at me, I know you're dealing with yourself. I am the excuse for you to get mad. And if you are mad because, and you are mad because you are afraid, because you are dealing with your fear. If you're not afraid, there's no way that you will hate me. If you're not afraid, there is no way you will be jealous or sad. If you live without fear, if you love, there is no room for any of those emotions. If you don't feel any of those emotions, then it's logical that you're going to feel good. When everything around you is great, everything makes you happy. You are loving everything around you because you are loving yourself. Hmm. Let's say this together. I do not take things personally and I am at peace. And I invite you to close your eyes and take a deep breath, breathing into this moment. And I invite you to take that journey from your head into your heart. They say it's about 18 inches. And just focus on the area around your heart. To focus on love and compassion and that part of you. And to call that love and compassion into this moment right now. And imagine that this love and light, this compassion within you is expanding. That it's moving through every place in you, every cell, every tissue. And know that this is the truth of who you are. And 
and breathe into that love and that compassion. And, and imagine that sometime in the future, you might get a little defensive. You might take something personally. And imagining that moment and see yourself in that moment taking a hold of this love and this compassion that you are and letting your mind, your body, and your spirit embrace this love and compassion. It's almost like you're projecting out into the future how you will be in that moment that you will make a choice not to react, but to respond. Breathing in to this feeling of love. And let's take just a moment in the silence to fully embrace this truth for ourselves, this love and this compassion. Breathing in and breathing out. Imagining your world filled with love, filled with compassion, filled with peace. And slowly and gently Begin to bring your awareness back to this moment. Being aware of sitting here in our sanctuary at Unity on Maui, feeling peaceful and loving, joyful. And I invite you to open your eyes whenever you're ready. Thank you. Thanks to everybody who uh, came together to make our service happen this morning. It takes a community to do this. And uh, thank you for all of you who are out there uh, watching us as well. And, um, you know, it should be fun to see some of you back here, sitting here live in our sanctuary. I, I've been told by many that there's a great feeling when you watch us on Facebook, but it's even multiplied if you're sitting here live in our sanctuary. We have a lot of people here today, but we also have a lot of empty seats. So come on back. And if you are here or out there and you'd like to donate flowers on Sunday morning, we have a sign-up sheet in the back. If you fill that out, put your name on it, who you'd like the flowers donated to. You can bring the flowers on that particular Sunday, and you can even take them home with you afterwards. So thank you for that. 
Um, let's see what else. Oh, today is a big day. Today is our uh, annual membership meeting. And unlike some years in the past, it's not happening in this room. So if you're thinking that you're going to stay or come to our meeting, please don't do so. We did send out a Zoom link back back on, um, what was it? I think it was like the 27th, 28th of um, September, and you'll find the links to our Zoom call there. So it's in the e-blast too. Yeah, thank you. So we'd love to have you join us for our meeting, um, and I'm going to rush out of here afterwards so I can go home and uh, do our meeting. So look forward to seeing you uh, at 1230 today. Um, also, this is really exciting news. Uh, our dear uh, prayer chaplain, uh, Christine um, Warner, is going to do a, a five-step prayer process class beginning on uh, October 27th. I think that's a couple of weeks from now. And that will be happening right here. The only way you can take that class is by coming here and participating uh, she's taught this class before. It is an amazing class that teaches a real practical and powerful way to pray. So I hope that you'll come and join that. The class is only $50 for four classes. And we are asking that if you commit to it, that you come to all four classes. Because if you don't, you're going to miss some of the five steps. And each one is important in this process. So uh, if, if you plan on coming, let me know, and uh, we'll look forward to that class in a couple of weeks. And I'm really happy about our Course in Miracles class. It's happening here on Mondays from 4 to 5.30. Uh, Linda is doing a phenomenal job. I understand that more people are coming and enjoying this powerful work. So that's happening right here on Mondays. Also, um, we've got a couple of events coming up, social events uh, that Mike Fleenor has organized. And um, I have to look here myself to make sure I get these things right. So next Saturday, October 15th, from 5 to 7, uh, a group is going to be bowling here on Maui. Did you know there's a bowling alley on Maui? I didn't know that for a long time until I was taking a dance class next door, and I'm hearing all these pins and balls hitting the walls next door and found out that there is this uh, bowling alley here on Mali, <laughs> Mali, uh, Bali. I was thinking about going to Bali. Wouldn't that be great to go to Bali? I don't know if you can bowl in Bali, but it sounds like fun. And so you can RSVP to Mike about uh, going bowling. And also there's a La Perouse hike happening uh, on October 28th, Saturday, um, or excuse me, the 29th. He wants us to RSVP by the 28th. And you can RSVP with him at 808-866-8622. A couple of fun things happening here. Also on Thursdays, we have a meditation right here in our sanctuary. Uh, I read the daily word and then we spend 30 minutes in the silence. It's a great way to be connected to your higher self in the middle of the week. And also, next Sunday, my, uh, we're continuing our Rewire Your Brain series, and my talk is titled, Don't Throw Darts. Um, <laughs> and the idea is that um, mental, physical pain is kind of part of our life experience. And sometimes when we experience that pain and that initial dart and we're feeling that pain, we can sometimes do things like throwing another dart and guess where that hits us and cause ourselves more pain with that second dart. So we're going to talk about next week, how can we change our thinking, our attitude so that we don't throw darts that uh, hit us someplace. My, my dad used to do this thing that cracked me up when I was a kid. He, um, he, he would say, I shot an arrow into the air, and I know not where it went. And then he would have one close to his rear end. 
Um, anyway, he, he was quite a character. I guess where I, that's where I get my bizarre sense of humor. So anyway, join us next Sunday at 10 o'clock for Don't Throw Darts. And if you do, come and see us about it. We'll fix it. And if you enjoyed my talk today, there's a walk your talk or a summary of everything that I talked about on the back table. And it'll also be in our newsletter that goes out on Thursday. So you can review what we talked about today. And I think that is it for today. So let's stand and take a deep breath. And uh, in a moment, we'll pray the prayer for protection. And then we'll sing together the peace song. So let's pray together. Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us wherever we are. God is. God is. God bless you, friend. Thank you for being here. Have a great week and see you next time. Aloha. Where I live, there are rain.